Right, so today we're going to put the rubber roof on. Um, it's above freezing, so it's fine to put it on today now. Uh, we're using this perma roof uh, water based adhesive. I don't know if you can see that there. It uh, says only to be applied if temperature is not going to fall below zero. And we've got a little bit milder weather coming up. And as you've seen me on the other one, what I did before as well, even though it was freezing, I put insulation over the top of the rubber. Held it down with some screen overnight and that works a treat. Um, that roof is on and secure. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use the still blower. I'm going to blow off the crap off the roof because overnight we put a bit of visqueen on this. Um, there's some creases in it, but you're not going to get them out because it's just so cold at the moment. So I'm going to blow the crap off and then I'm going to roll back the rubber and I'm going to show you how we're going to bond the rubber down to the roof. <laughs> So <coughs> what I'm going to do then, I'm going to pull, I've already gone round and trimmed it, it's about 100mm bigger all the way around. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fold that back like that. Then once we're good there, I'm then going to fold it in half again, trying to keep that one down there. And then what that will do... That will enable me to roll it back, just like if you were rolling up a carpet. There we go. We've got the roll on that now. So the weight of the rubber is holding it down to the roof, because obviously what you don't want, you don't want it to slip and be on the piss and then find out when you glue it down, you've got two inch of OSB showing over there. That's obviously a no go. So we've got, what I've done yesterday, I fixed this roof down, it's OSB free roofing board. Um, I fixed it with 63 mil PAS, PAS loads. I've also glued the joints. I've sanded it, I've prepped it all, so it's nice and smooth. Just gonna give it a little blow off, make sure there's no crap on it. There we go. What I'm gonna do now is, I've got, it's just an emulsion roller tray. It's perfect for the job. Let's get that glue off there. Um, pour some of that in there. It's a water-based adhesive. Um, you've seen me do these before. We don't use the contact adhesive around the edge because it's messy, it's a hassle. Um, uh, you often get bubbles in it and you don't need it because the rubber is mechanically fixed round with the curb trims. So the water-based adhesive is absolutely fine on its own. So you don't have to leave that 100mm strip around for the contact adhesive. I'm just going to load the roller up there, make sure there's plenty of glue on it. What I'm going to do now is just roll probably about, it's probably about half a metre of glue on there. Make sure there's plenty on. The first couple of rolls, um, you just want to make sure it's loaded on properly. You don't want any big globules of it though. Um, come summertime, by the time you get to the other side, it'll have dried off, so you've got to be super quick in summertime. Um, if you've used this glue before, you'll know how tacky it gets, so it's quite, it's quite good stuff. So there's just me on here today. Um, I know it's obviously clearing up, but less people on the roof, the better. Um, like I said, if it was summertime, what I'd be doing is having one man roller in it and another man on the brush then to blow, to, not to blow, to um, squeeze any air bubbles out that occurred. So I'm going to do that all the way down. Um, I know a lot of you are going to say, get yourself a, a roller on a stick, but... This works, it's only like an hour's work in it, you know. So there you go, I've got like a nice 500 strip all the way down. Might just go a little bit wider on that actually, because it's not tacking off because it's cold today. So, as long as I can step over it to get to my rubber, I'm good. Like I say, it's not supposed to be freezing today or tonight. But we've got some insulation which has just arrived, so I'm going to cut that and lay it on top of the roof. Um, just to stop any frost if it does get into the rubber, which obviously will affect the water-based glue. 
which is what you, you don't want. So, there we go. So I've, not, I've not done the 100mm stripe round the edge with the contact adhesive because, I mean, what got me onto it? A rep rang me up trying to sell me the product. And I asked him how much the contact to these because I knew off the top of my head how much it was, you know, to compare prices. And he says, you don't need it, mate. And he were right, you don't need it. Because you of course, mechanically fixed down. So what I'm gonna use now is this soft sweeping brush. It's a soft bristle brush. And what we'll do now is just roll that rubber over to there. And what I'm gonna do now is just brush it down, getting rid of any air bubbles. As I said, there's factory crease in this, there's not a lot you can do with it. I'll get the heat gun on it in a bit, see if I can get them out a little bit, but once they're in, they're in, because what's happening then is you're trying to heat it, the rubber's cold, it heats where you're trying to get the crease out and it's nowhere to expand apart from upwards, so then you get a bigger bubble. So, um, I found the best way to do this, like, like you've just seen me do there, is roll the rubber back like a carpet. Then it keeps it all tidy in one place. Easy to roll back out with your sweeping brush then. If you've seen me do these before, you'll know come summertime I've got to work like hell because it tacks off so quickly in the heat. Preparation of the roof and all, once you get your OSB down, you need to go around and check it all. Make sure that you've got no burrs sticking up. Definitely no nails that are proud if they are, hammer them home. What we do then, we get palm sander and just rub palm sander over the full roof. Just to flatten it off and get rid of any crap that's on it. That's half a roof done. What we'll do now is go over with the sweeping brush and get any bubbles out and get it all nice and flat and push down. I'm just going to roll that back until I find my glue line, which is there. Roll it back just a little bit <coughs> and then re glue and start this side again now. Carry on. It's exactly the same as that side now. <laughs> So what we're going to do now, we're going to drop this 100mm insulation on the top of the rubber just to protect it overnight. Um, it's not supposed to fall below zero, but just in case it does, this will obviously stop it from getting cold and freezing. Right, we're back on the 1-0 clay. Um, we put the 100mm insulation down last night and we covered it with visqueen to keep it tight to the roof, stop the wind blowing it off, just in case it froze last night, but it didn't. It stayed well above zero, so we know that this roof's fine now. It's been bonded down, it's not falling below zero, and even if it had, with the 100mm insulation on top, that would have protected it from freezing over anyway, because we've done it before and it works. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get these off, I'm going to show you how to do the soffits and fascias, and then we're going to put a little bit something different on top of the roof as well. Right, we've got the roof, uh, the rubber bonded down to the OSB free. Um, it didn't freeze last night, so we're all good. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put on this ribbed hollow soffit on the um, on the soffit. That will go on the front. It will also carry the lights for the downlighters. And then this 100 mil will go on the sides and the back. Um, so it's a UPVC. It's hollow ribbed, as you can see there. What we'll do, um, we'll nail it in, in the ribbed section there um, where the timber roofs are. But what we need to do first is just break this joining strip off it because what we want, when we put our fascia corner on, we don't want the fascia corner to sit down into that groove because if it sits into that groove, it will then hold that at a different height. So what we want, we want the fascia, let me just get one. We want the fascia corner. Just show you now. So what we want, we want the fascia corner to sit on there like that, rather than sit in that groove because it's then lower, which will then make the uh, side soffit a different height. So because we're doing it that, and because we're joining it this way, we then need to break off this 
just this plastic trim. It's quite it's still a bit cold today, so it's just snapping off. Um, might normally break it off with a Stanley knife. Um, what we're going to do then, we're going to get all get all the uh, soffit on first and then what we'll do then, we'll go around and do the fascia. So we're going to fix it with these 40mm poly top nails. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to fix it with these poly tops. They're stainless steel. They've got a ring cut on which holds them in and they've also got a black poly top head on it. So when we nail that in there, we'll nail it through there and then you'll be left with the little black poly top like that, which is a nice discreet fixing. Um, what we're gonna do in all, when we fix the soffit um, around the sides and the back, we're gonna fix it with these, but we're gonna take the head off them first so that they sit flush and don't impede the fascia when the fascia sits on. So the way we're gonna take the head off them, just gonna get that there, can you see Adam? Yep. Just get that in, in the chlorum like that and just pull it off and then you've got a nice flat headed pin. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, we're going to trim this, get it up into place. Uh, the building, they're coming five meter lengths. The building's soffit is longer than five meters, so we'll join it by means of a joining strip, which is here. So that's a joining strip. So what, what, if you want to walk over there, so what will happen with that? That will just go on there like like that, and then the other piece will go in there like that. Now, some of you, I know some of you'll go, well, you're doing it wrong way around, you should fix it, um, I don't know, going out like that rather than along its length because it joins and you can't see the seams. But if you do that, where we've positioned our lights, guaranteed one of them will end up sitting there and it looks crap. What we want is one of our lights to sit dead centre there rather than sitting over the ridge. Uh, over the dip rather. So we're gonna get that fixed now. I'll show you how we'll fix it um, And then we'll move on to the fascias Okay, so because we're using these little stainless steel pins obviously stainless steel is very soft It bends very easy. So when you're driving it up into them, obviously you can't see if you've got a knot there So what I do I'll, I'll send it in if it feels a bit stiff um, I'll, I'll pull it out again. <laughs> um, And then what I'll do then I'll just pile it, but not all the way home, just halfway, so that I've got half my nail in. See, like half it's gone in there now before it's met any resistance, and then that way, then I've not got as far to hammer it. There you go, and um, it won't because once it's gone in, it gets past a certain point and it's bent. You're never getting it out, so that's a little tip there you might want to do there. So what I'll do now, I'll trim off the edge there. You can you see we've used that H trim there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a bit of soffit a bit of fascia, sorry, hold it up, offer it back, and then what I'll do, I'll push that H trim back so that it butts up to the back side of the soffit, the fascia rather even. Right, so I've got a little piece of fascia there. What I'm going to do now is just offer that up into place, and what I've done then, I've pushed that H trim back so that it butts up to the back side of that, because if you don't, what will happen then, it'll push, it'll push your uh, fascia off and then you'll have a little ridge in it, so that, that'll pop up there nice and tight like that. Um, and then what we'll do, we'll trim off the back sides there. And then I've got my H trim again, which will then go on the side like that. And then the 100 mil soffit that I showed you earlier on will then drop straight down the side. And I'll show you how we put that on too. Right. So I've took the heads off the poly tops. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to drive it up right near the edge. And the reason why I put the head off the poly top is so that when the fascia goes on, it then sits tight to the soffit and doesn't hold off and conceals the nail. Whereas if the if the head of the nail was there, it'd hold it off a bit and then you'll have a gap. Not at the end of the world, but that's just a lot better finish. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to work my way along here and put these in. And then I'll just put the last bit of H trim in the end and you can see how that all goes together. Okay, so there's the H trim. That'll slide on there like that, and it'll also slide on there like that. So what I want to do is offer that up, get it to go down, and again, I'm going to get me a little bit of soffit. Because what we want, we want that to sit. See how that's holding it off now? So what we want is to push that back there, so it just slides up to that, and then that, when that fascia's on there, that'll provide a nice finish because that'll run straight the way through there. 
So that's that in. Um, I'll just show you how to take the heads off them poly tops again. Just get in your hammer, pop it off, and that job's done. Don't forget, it's all concealed, is these nails, so you're not going to see any of them. So what I'm going to do, get the multi-tool, I'm going to whip them off now. We're going to cut our, what we've got, we've got a 175 fascia. So what we'll do is we'll measure from the underside to there and then trim the fascia down so that it's just flush with the top of the OSB. And then the rubber will sit over that and then we'll put our trims on there as well then. Right, I just want to show you this end. So it was about one, two degrees last night. We've protected it with some, you can see there, look, it's bonded to it, still tacking off but it's bonded sufficiently enough to that there. Okay, we've determined the height of our spacer. Um, we held it up, we marked it. So we've set this circular saw, the little Makita circular saw. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this down. I've obviously got safety glasses on because this goes in your eyes, guaranteed. So there you go. What we'll do now, we'll get a bit of this blue roll. And we'll just clean it off because these little bits uh, go this sort of staticky and the stir to it, so we can get off the bulk of it. Um, what we'll do then, we'll offer that up. I'll show you the nail spacing now. I'm not going to go up on the roof to do this because it's wet up there. Um, we're going to use these 60 mil poly top nails. Just a bigger version of the smaller one, really. Um, massive big poly top head on there as well. Right, 60 mil poly top. So what we're going to do, we're going to sit the poly top like that. So the cap there is the distance the poly top is going to be. We're going to stand it up and we're just going to tap it in just like that. We're then going to use the hammer as the spacer. Again, set my poly top like that. Stand it up. Just tap it in just a little bit. And what we'll do then, we'll carry this all the way along the fascia and then the nails are in a uniform line evenly spaced and obviously the same distance up as well which you want you don't want your nails all over the place so that's where I'm going to do them um, and just for you that guy who said there's too many nails in your fascia how can you have too many nails surely this is like it's it's adequate they're about what they're about 400 space or I don't know 350 spacer, they're uniform, they all look nice, they're in line, they're no brainer. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to offer this up. It obviously wants pushing tight to the soffit on the back side of the rubber Adam. That's it. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get it tight to that corner there. Just give me a bit of slack. There we go, and I'm pushing it tight up as well. Right, so this is a fascia jointing strip. So obviously the fascia is longer than the five meters, which this comes at standard. So let's let's imagine we've got two bits of fascia there. Fascia jointing strip, we've cut it to the same height. That will then sit on there, like such. And there you go. And when, when you, so you'll have your fascia nailed already. And then this one's either nailing or super gluing. Um, super gluing sometimes can fail. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna nail it. But, because it's cold, put a nail in there, a little poly top nail, and sometimes it'll want to break. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the big poly tops. Adam says I'm being tight and I should buy a little drill bit set. So if you think I should buy a drill bit set, leave a comment. If you don't and you think this is a better idea because it's to hand and it's free, then leave a comment on that as well. So I've took the head off that. I'm now going to put it in my drill. Whoop. Right. Put it down a bit more. It's, whoop. There you go. So that's now located in the drill. So that there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to decide where I'm going to put my poly top. And I'm going to drill through like that. I'm just going to actually put two in there. So what I'll do is I'll put another one there because um, the capping will sit over the top, so that'll hold that on anyway. So there you go. So what I've done now, I've created two holes in there. Let me just find a small poly top. And when we come to put our small poly tops through, 
I've then created a hole which is big enough for the small poly top to sit through and it's not going to crack that which you can often do when the temperatures get down to zero so as a little tip for you um, you might say it's a tight tip or oh, you might, might maybe it's a good tip we don't know yeah. right so there's my fascia on there's my poly tops in I've spaced that one as well there so that they're all even and I'm not for that up like that I've pre-drilled my holes in there this won't break it's fine it's just the, the thinner plastic There you go, nice little finish on that. Let's finish that up, you'll never see that again now. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna return down that side and work his way around, and I'm gonna show you how to cut the corner detail off there so that the corner capping conceals all the joint. What I'm gonna show you now is how to do your corner detail, but, um, no, I've just done that completely wrong end. Right, um, it's, it's a little, I'm gonna show you it, but these corners I've got here, I, I don't even know where I've got them from, they're absolutely huge. So these are going to cover it anyway. But what would normally happen, so that's my front fascia there. Imagine that's on the front. And so they're butting up to each other. You see, you've got that massive gap there. You see like that. Um, this corner, as it happens, is huge and will cover it. Normally they won't cover it. So what you need to do is mark that there and then mark this, this distance there Adam can you see that there that distance there that distance there and then that section there I'm then going to take out with multi-tool and use a handsaw if you've got a handsaw there you go so that's come out of there now so if you can imagine that's our front fascia this is our side fascia they now butt up nice to each other like that. And then what will happen then? That corner trim will go on there and conceal everything. So that's what you need to be doing there. Chop that out, that distance there, the thickness of that, take it out there. And then that will allow then that board to get back sufficiently enough for that corner to cover that detail. <laughs> Right, so you're all your fascia and soffits are on now, so that's your fascia joint and strip. We use black poly top pins, 60s and 40s, and there's your corner. Again, I piloted that hole just because it's a little bit brittle because of cold weather. And we don't want it to break on us when we've got this far now. So what'll happen now, I'll go around, the port, rest of them corners on. I'll cut this rubber back to 50mm, so it's 50mm hanging over. And then what we'll do then, we'll put our um, rubber roof trims on and I'll show you them going on as well as the two-part gutter trim at the back. Right, we're going to put the two-part gutter trim on now. So that two-part gutter trim is the first trim you want to put on. We're going to fix this to the back of the fascia with 60 mil screws. I'll just show you where. Let me just show you this look. So these are the guys that I work with. Look, this is how they look after my stuff. Obviously left that open. So all my bits are all rusty and knackered now. Look, look at these, look. You know? This is, this is the kind of people I'm working with. Right, so we're going to put a positive bit in there, 60 mil screws. What we're going to do, we're going to use that line there as our start for our screw. That would have come out straight away, but it's rusted in. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to send them in like that, just so they're all ready to go for when we offer it up. Space them about every 400. So that's the two pack gutter trim. If Adam walks to the end now, I'll show you how it works. Right, so that's the first part. That fixes to your fascia, like that. Right, so then your rubber trim then goes over the top. So that's, imagine imagine that bit there's your deck. You've bonded your rubber on, you've got your, your overhang there. So what you want to do with your overhang is cut it. What I do, so my overhang's hanging over there like that. And what I'll do then, I'll locate my knife into that groove there. Obviously, this isn't bonded, so it's not going to work as well as what I'd like it to front roof. And then I'll just drag my blade down the groove like that. And then what will happen then, that will give you enough to do what it is designed to do. So what happens there then? So imagine that that's bonded on there. That's your fascia. That's your OSB down there. And that's your rubber bonded on over there. So what will happen then is... You'll force that bit up 
into that groove there, like that, and then that bit there, well, click in. There you go. So that's clicked in. So what's happened now is, imagine that's your fascia. That's your first part. You've got a trim screw to there. Your rubber's come over the top. It's tucked in there now. It's tucked down the back of there. That's clipped in there. So any water now will run like that, run like that. I'll put it like that and then you can visualise it a little bit better. So there's your rubber. It'll run off your roof, onto that drip there, down there and into your gutter there. So that's how the two-part gutter trim works. It, in my opinion, it's the best gutter trim on the market. Um, they've got another one where you just literally nail a piece like that and trap the rubber behind it, but you're nailing through the rubber there, which seems crazy to me. Anyway, so we're going to pop that on the back now. What we're going to do now, as with a lot of these builds, we're often tight for space. Everybody wants them pushed back up to the boundary. So what we're going to do now is put this gutter trim on the fascia there. And just notice now, I've just forgotten to put them end caps on, Adam. That needs doing as well. And what I'll do is screw that to the fascia. Um, what it is, I'm just feeling with my fingertips there. And it's just dead flush with the top of that board there, because obviously you want this rubber, you want this rubber to run over the top um, and not. The bit, you don't want a little. You don't want a little step, basically. That wants to go over there like that. So we're going to put this all the way down, and then what we'll do then? I'll jump a pond roof and I'll trim. I'll trim the rubber off so it's 50 mil all round. But on the back, I'll trim it so it goes into that groove there. And that'll give me enough then to tuck in. Right, we're going to put the second part of the gutter trim in. I've showed you over there how it works. Right, so it's um, the hell is, it's January. It's cold. So what sometimes happens is it doesn't want to go in, um, and when it does go in, it, it breaks the, the little grippy thing. So I'll just show you what, what, what I mean by that. So what I'm doing now, I'm pushing it up as far as I can get it in. Like that, and then I'm gonna just pop it in. Obviously, you want to trap the rubber behind it. I'm pushing it up as far as I can. And that's gone in there, but you can normally hear it popping there. So I don't know if Adam can just step back and you can see that nice detail now. It's pulled the rubber tight, it goes around there, it's trapped under there, so any rain water will go down there, but deflect it off that into your um, into your gutter. Right, so what we're going to do on this one, and it's the first time we've done it, so you'll have to bear with us. Um, we're going to put AstroTurf on the roof um, for no other reason apart from the fact it look aesthetically pleasing. But for the people, I know a couple of people have mentioned that they've asked if uh, cats are going to claw your roof, if squirrels, if fireworks are going to damage your rubber roof, then I suppose this could be the answer to that question for you as well because it's got an extremely thick rubber back on it. It's porous, so it'll let the water through onto the roof. Um, what I'm kind of thinking is and all, it's going to extend the roof life considerably because obviously you've got no direct sun on it and because you've got the grass you've also got a slight thermal property as well which will help with the warm and the cold roof scenario slightly but what we're going to do I'm going to roll it out like this um, obviously it's flat so it needs brushing up um, as you do with grass light right so we've gone for this 20 mil pile i don't know if adam can look in a bit closer it, it looks i mean the look of it absolutely looks like real grass you like that actually looks like there's dead bits inside it so once it's all brushed up it will look like um, a lawn uh, i suppose it's an instant green roof an instant living roof of happened the fact it isn't living uh, the guy who sold me this as well it's a good quality one he told me that it's got a what they call it a thermal memory thermal memory it's been through some kind of heat process so when the sun shines on it all these all these blades of imitation grass will then stick up when the sun's on it so that's what it's going to look like we're also going to use the p-trim to hold it down we've got some special adhesive to hold it down as well um, i'm going to explain where and why we're putting the adhesive on where we put it as well 
Right, so this is the P-trim. This will go over the edge of the building, hold the rubber down. It'll also hold the grass down as well. Um, what happens with that then? That goes like that. It'll fix mechanically with poly tops to the face of the building. It's also trapped uh, 20 mil of grass under there as well there, so the wind's not gonna get to that. Little tip for you, if it comes with this blue stuff on, don't leave it out in the sun because you'll spend hours trying to get that off. It breaks off into really little pieces, so don't leave it in the sun, leave it covered up or get it off prior to installation and put it somewhere else. See, like that, that happens constantly all the way down it and it's a bloody nightmare to get off. So, I won't lie, it's the first time we've done this um, learning curve, but I think it's going to actually look pretty, pretty spot on, really, as you can see already. Once that grass is brushed back, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to brush that down to there Give it a nice rub down, and that will adhere to the rubber then. Like I say, we've opted for a good quality one. Um, I don't know how much truth is in the fact, but the guy who sold me it says that the bigger rolls over four metres, they're a cheaper quality one and they're not as good. So that's why we've opted for this one and put a jointing strip in it, but once you join it, you can never see. It's like pulling a thread out of a jumper, isn't it? Right, so that's that on there now what i'm going to do as well just going to pop a little bit on the front so what i'm thinking is first of all you've got aesthetics it's going to look the business secondly you've got more protection on your roof so if you're worried about squirrels or cats or anything like that then i think the only thing you need to worry about now is a mole if you get them all up here Right, so that's on there. I'm happy with that now. So what I'm going to do now is get my P-trim, so-called P-trim curb trim. It sits on the roof. So if my hand is the roof there, it sits on there. That bonds the rubber. The rubber obviously drops down the side there. You mechanically fix it. That holds the rubber and the grass down on, the, on this occasion. So what we're saying is we're not using contact adhesive because it's mechanically fixed all around. You've seen how I've pushed it in, how tight it's gone at the back there. So now this then, you've got this round as well. And if you can dad and just see that now, so I'm trapping the rubber and trapping the grass. And I'm gonna pop that down like that. Push that tight back to the building. Right, I'll just pop this one in and I'll explain these poly tops and the reason why they've got big holes in like that. Right, this is plastic. Plastic expands in the heat. You can see a slotted hole there. Can you see that Adam? Yeah. It's got a slotted hole, so what you need to do is put your nail in halfway so it allows the plastic to slide backwards and forwards. But that will not happen if you drive your nail all the way home. So what you need to do is just send it just so it's nearly home. And just is enough. Right, so what I'm doing, I'm pushing down, because obviously I've got the grass on it now. There we go. What I'm kind of thinking, is this, this might be quite a common thing for us now because you look out your window, you've got this big black expanse of roof and you've took away part of your lawn or whatever, but now you've got your lawn back. No maintenance, none at all. UV, yeah, UV stable. So it's not gonna fade. It's not gonna rot away. You don't need to cut it. Visually, it'll look bang on. And it's got a little bit of a thermal property as well, because obviously it's going to trap air. I think the only downside is if you're a bit funny about stuff, you might want to get up with a blower now and again and blow it off, if you've got leaves on it. So that's what we're going to do there. Now we're going to put a P-jointing strip on there and then infill that last bit. And then I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to show you how we're going to bond the back down, bond the sides and actually join the grass as well. So you can see, I'm just putting the edge trims around now. We've joined the, we've joined the um, grass there. What I'll do, I'll brush all the grass back and it'll look like that everywhere then. Um, and that's it, I'm gonna bond it all around down the back as well. Um, I'll show you what I'm gonna bond it at the back though. Obviously, this is permeable, so the water drains through this and it'll go onto the rubber roof below. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bond it in diagonal stripes like, sorry, diagonal stripes like that, so that the water can still run down and we haven't created a dam to stop it. 
So there you have it, you've seen me do the roof, we bonded the roof down, um, it was cold so we put 100 mils of insulation over the top of it to stop it from freezing. As it happened it didn't freeze, we took that off, we've done the soffits and fascias, I showed you how we do them as well. Uh, we've done the end caps, we've done the two pack goat trim as well. And we've also bonded down this um, artificial grass to the roof which looks, looks absolutely spot on and I can see us moving forward with this quite a bit. Um, it's a lot better than the the black emptiness of the um, roof what you can see out your bedroom windows and stuff like that so you'll just see sort of it'll blend in with the lawn now so i think i think that might be it so that's us for today now i'm going to get myself off home um so don't forget if you're after a build pack build packs are for sale they're at oakwoodgardenrooms.com um, and if you there's a pull down menu there's 13 different sizes and you can build the builds exactly the same way as we do okay so thanks for watching like and subscribe and of course always as always leave comments good and bad and i'm sure i'm going to upset some people with this roof but there you go that's us done for today thank you mm.